victims of identity theft continue to experience delays in receiving their tax funds. According to a report from the Treasury Inspector General, it took the IRS, on average, 278 days to resolve such tax fraud accounts. With more on this IRS debacle is Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist. Grover, <clears throat> so there you see it, my friend. Yeah. This guy is a tax official. He collects taxes for a living. He yeah. tracks fraud and he gets ripped off. How can this be possible? And, well, in 20 percent of cases, it takes longer than a year. Um, so there's there's a very serious problem. The IRS is not doing its job here. And one of the problems that we've had to pass a law this week, uh, there was a law passed in the House of Representatives to ban Hillary Clinton from working at the IRS and doing what she did at the State Department. You can no longer, when this bill passes completely through, use your private Gmail accounts. And IRS <laughs> agents have been putting your data and mine on their accounts. Now, when Hillary was letting other people read our state secrets on her Gmail account, that's one thing. But our personal data, well, um, this is going to be a crime as soon as the House goes. I have to tell you, this is astonishing to me. What you're describing, actually, is that IRS agents, when they leave the agency, they still have access to, to all of the computer yes. information. There's that. And then there are the hackers, the people who get in the middle. And why can they get in the middle? Because the IRS has such flimsy security systems. The GAO reported on this recently, and here's what they said. They said the IRS's failure to secure its massive database is making tax uh, payers private information vulnerable to hackers. And I submit this to you, Grover, because I know you're the expert on this. But when individual Americans doing the right thing, taking up their civic responsibility and paying their taxes, are faced yeah. with having their mm -hmm. personal identity stolen but for, by doing this, it's simply unacceptable. Yeah. What do you say? Well, it is. And the, the people who run the IRS have been spending time, as we now know because of congressional hearings, targeting people for political reasons, hauling them in and asking them how often they pray to see whether they're going to get a, a, a tax number for their um, uh, Tea Party group. Uh, 500,000 hours this year in, uh, of IRS people supposed to be working for you and me. We're doing union work paid for oh. by you and our, my taxes. So why do they not have time to fix this? Because they're not being serious about managing themselves. Well, and, and of course, we also saw uh, other scandals as well. Uh, super expensive, luxurious conferences in Las Vegas yeah. and, and other places that they paid for. Uh, the list goes on and on. You know, when you have an investigation like you did into the tax-exempt arm of the IRS and Lois Lerner, yeah. it's hard to keep your eyes on the prize. It's hard to be obsessed and focused on the job that you have to do day to day. And I think this is part of the problem as well. Their attention has been distracted by all these scandals. Let me show you the impact of this, though. The IRS paid fraudulent filers, which is what we've been talking about here, $5.2 billion in 2013. Taxpayers' ID stolen has gone from 270,000 in 2010 to 1.6 million, 1.6 million in 2013. And you know, Grover, what the solution was by the IRS for fixing this? They met privately, secretly, with heads of big accounting firms, H&R Block and others, uh, privately, quietly, on the side, didn't make anything public. We're hearing from them now that they're not going to have any solutions for this year. I believe, and I want to know what you think, I believe that's just not good enough. Uh, it's not the entire leadership there. We saw this with the Secret Service. The top leadership needs to be removed and replaced. Grover, we got a long way to go on this one. I hope you'll come back soon and talk to us about it. Thank you. Sure.